Hello and welcome back. This is Angie Homley Zabo and today I'm going to start a new project with you. Today we are going to start a mixed media project. Mixed media is when you take one or more different drawing or painting medias and actually can do it in 3D too and you combine them to make one finished piece. Mixed media can be a little tricky because certain medias don't like to play nice together. <laughs> so part of my job in the next series of videos is to talk with you how to build up a piece and use media in a way in which they do play nice with each other. A ton of mixed media work is really just experimenting, playing, and seeing what you can do. Um, if you don't know if something's going to work, try it out in your sketchbook first and take your time with it. See what happens. Experiment. Have some fun with your art. You know how to do a lot of different things. Now you just got to let yourself try some new stuff. To start our mixed media piece, we're going to prepare a substrate. A substrate is any type of surface on which one can build a piece of art. So have some fun, make a plan for the piece that you want to make, make sure you have that plan ready as you start your project so that as you go through each step you are utilizing that step to further the mood, message, or content of your piece. Have some fun my friends. Let's get started with this mixed media project. Our first step is to set up our substrate. A substrate is any surface on which you create a piece of art. In this case, we're going to either use um, some heavy-duty watercolor paper or pieces of masonite board. If you really want to explore beyond that, you can work on pretty much anything. I've had students or myself work on doors, window frames, chairs, anything that you can sand a little bit and prime in some way, shape, or form. With our watercolor paper, we handle it in one of a couple of different ways. Route number one is just to take the watercolor paper and use a mixture of gesso, maybe with a touch of acrylic to tint it, and paint that surface. Route number two is to collage it, like you can see here first, and this is just an example of collaging with newspaper. And then we will gesso on top of that collage. The gesso allows us to draw into the page. This piece has been collaged, you can kind of see the texture of the paper here, and then painted with our heavier coat so you can't see through it. On the masonite, we prep the masonite first by sanding the surface, and then we're going to put on um, a coat of gesso or two on the front and the back of the piece. And then you can finish by tinting the gesso with a little bit of acrylic. You never want to use too much or it becomes too plastic to work on top of. So just a little bit of color in that gesso to give it some tone if you'd like. You can also collage on the masonite as well. So on this piece, you can see that we've collaged some newspaper first and then gone over with the gesso, kept the gesso a little looser so that you could see the text through. Our first step using either our paper or masonite is to prepare the substrate. So if I'm using masonite, I'm gonna get a 220 sandpaper and I'm gonna really carefully sand the back, the front, and the sides of my piece. If you want a collage, your next step would be collaging. If you're working on paper, you just go straight to the collage. If you're working on the masonite, you sand, then collage. So I'll show you how I collage first. A couple of different notes with collage. I'm not a huge fan of students just cutting or anybody just cutting their pieces because those sharp edges collage together don't really blend very well. Um, you can like straight up, if you don't care about the content of the paper that you're collaging, I would just suggest ripping it into lots of little pieces. Um, I'm going to do my piece based on a poem by Emily Dickinson called Hope is the Thing with Feathers. Um, so I want to be able to read those, those words. In order to rip the paper so it doesn't have a cut edged, um, I'm going to put a ruler down and I just pull my paper against that edge and that'll give a ripped edge but I can contain it and still be able to see the text of my piece. And then in spaces like this where the text is uneven, I'm just gonna come in and rip a little bit more loosely. The other thing I like to do with my collage pieces other than rip the edges is I like to crumple them up a little bit. It just dirties up that surface, gives you a little bit more texture to work on, um, and you just get a better, I don't know, sense of layering and life to the piece. So I crumple it and then I uncrumple it. After that, I'm going to start applying my paper to the watercolor or if I was working on newsprint, the newsprint. 
I'm gonna use Mod Podge. The matte finish tends to work a little bit better than the glossy finish. So if you can get matte Mod Podge, use that. I wanna cover the backs of all my pieces, but I wanna to try to avoid getting on the front if I can. So I'm gonna set myself up here and then I'll get started. Whether I'm working on top of watercolor paper or masonite, my setup is just the same. I've got a piece of scrap paper to apply Mod Podge on top of, water, um, some type of, I'm using plexiglass, but any kind of palette that you can mix a little Mod Podge with water, because I like to thin it a little bit. I've got paper towels if I need it, and I've got all of my paper prepped and ready to go. And all I'm gonna do is apply Mod Podge, water down a little bit to the back of my paper, and just layer paper up. As I put it down, I'm gonna press it down. It's gonna take me a while to do this, so I'm gonna start my favorite podcast, and I'll fast forward the video and touch base with you as I go. This part is pretty simple, it just takes time. I'm taking a little bit of Mod Podge, I add a little bit of water to it to thin it down, and then I thoroughly coat the back of each piece of paper. Make sure you don't leave any dry spots. When you put it down onto your back piece, make sure that you rub it down so that nothing peels up. You're gonna keep doing this over and over again until you've covered the whole sheet like this. Once you've got that whole sheet covered, let it set up a little bit, and if you see any gaps, just use your brush with the Mod Podge on it to kind of lift and put underneath pieces where they're popping up. You want to avoid putting the Mod Podge on the front of the piece as that can resist some of the paint sometimes. So try to keep that Mod Podge under the paper if at all possible. I'll also go back around the outside and if I have any edges where the paper is sticking up, I'll feed a little Mod Podge under that too so it doesn't start to peel from the back edge. At this point, you are ready for the next step. All right, once you've got your surface prep, so it's either sanded or sanded and collaged or it's collaged paper or just plain paper if you don't want the collage underneath your next step is to use gesso to prepare the surface for any of the drawing and painting materials we're going to be using in this process gesso is a primer that you're probably most used to use in painting but it's a great material to use underneath pretty much any type of drawing that you can think of. It's got a real chalky surface so it accepts lots and lots of different drawing mediums. You can stain it with a little bit of acrylic or watercolor paint if you want to take it out of that white zone. You can thin it with water so there's transparency or you can leave it just as is so it's an opaque surface. On the masonite, once you've sanded it, you want to do a coat of gesso on the back, a coat of gesso on the front, a second coat of gesso on the back, and the final coat of gesso on the front side. And on the final coat of this, I added a little purple and black, and I used varied brush strokes to give it different kinds of tones and colors. On this piece, which is on paper, I'm also going to start by gessoing the back of the paper. You can see that it's kind of curled from the process of do, using the Mod Podge. By gessoing the back, it's gonna stretch the paper back this way a little bit um, and flatten it out some. Now there's still gonna be a curve to this. We'll eventually either weigh it down or iron it to get rid of the curve. But I'm gonna start with a gesso layer on the back. I'll let it dry and then I'll work on the front and show you how to water it down. I'm setting up a palette with two of the colors that I want to use to tint my gesso, and then I'm thinning them out with a little bit of water. So I've got a blue and I've got a black. I'm going to take the color out of my brush by rinsing it out and drying it off, and I'm going to scoop out a whole bunch of uh, gesso onto my palette. I'll then add water to that gesso and mix a little bit of the gesso in with a little bit of the acrylic. It is important in this step that you don't put too much acrylic into your gesso. If you do, too much of that plastic will th show through and you'll have a hard time drawing on top of it. The gesso allows us to have a surface on which we can draw, so we're just tinting it with the acrylic. Then I'm applying it to my collage, or I can apply it directly to masonite or directly to the watercolor paper as well. I can mix the color right on the page. Um, I can you know, add a little bit more color if I need to. I can layer things up. If it's too thick, I can just get my brush wet and thin it out. Um, and you'll see me in a little bit here, I'll add some more black to the corners. And I get a little too dark with that black. And so what I'm gonna do is go in with a paper towel and kind of dab some away. And then I'll brush it back out with a damp brush. Once I've got my color set up, I'm gonna set it to the side and just let it dry. Take your time on this step, make sure you've got a nice background and you don't apply too much acrylic paint within that gesso. 
on masonite, you're going to go through much the same process. On this piece, I want a more opaque finish, so I'm not applying as much water in with my gesso. Um, and I want to show more of the brush strokes. You'll see as we get towards the end, once I have the basic layout, that I'm going to use a little bit stiffer brush and kind of let those brush strokes show. So take your time in this step. Feel free to layer it up, add some texture, add a little bit of color. The majority of the color on this piece and value is going to come from drawing medium. But you can tint that gesso a little bit just to start building up your mood and the appearance of your piece. Think about the composition that you'll have in the end and make sure that you apply a background that highlights that composition. Our next step will be um, setting up the drawing itself using a graphite pencil on this piece. So get ready for that next step with some great photography or good sketches that you can transfer to your final drawing.